Welcome to Max VA Disability, where it's your body, your claim, and most importantly, people, it's your money. Everybody, I'm Blackhawk Brian. The topic of this video is VA proposes updates to rating schedule for respiratory auditory. I've got a separate video that covers the proposed updates for mental disorders. Again, what I'm going to show you today that was interesting to me is what the current rating schedule or the scheduler ratings are with the diagnostic codes for essentially you're looking at sleep apnea, which is under the respiratory system, and tinnitus under auditory. And yes, I know it's pronounced tinnitus. I'm still going to call it tinnitus. Again, this article was published last year, February 15th, 2022. A lot of videos were done on it. The question that I have and everybody else has is, is this going to take effect? When it's going to take effect? Well, the answer that I have right now is I really don't know. I don't think anybody else does either. So just to recap, modernizing the evaluation rating criteria for sleep apnea using developments in medical knowledge to evaluate it based on its responsiveness to treatment, bringing the rating criteria from sleep for sleep apnea more closely in line with the stated purpose of the rating schedule. Let me sum this up in my own words. Basically, they're saying if you've got sleep apnea and you get a CPAP and it fixes you, then they're going to give you a rating of zero. The other big question, will people be grandfathered? And so far, the answer is yes. The second one, evaluating tinnitus ringing in the ears as a symptom of an underlying disease which causes it rather than a standalone disability. So basically, it's going to be a secondary condition. I'll make this statement. While the mental health rating changes appear to help the veteran, these two here do not. So let's cover sleep apnea first. Diagnostic code 6847. This is the current 38 CFR. This is pretty straightforward. There's some videos out there that take forever to explain it, but essentially you got four different ratings, a 0, 30, 50, and 100. If you've got to have a CP, if you're diagnosed with uh, sleep apnea, you've got a nexus, it was service connected, and you've got a CPAP, boom, there's your 50% rating. End of video. So let's jump right over to the Federal Register. The schedule for rating disabilities, ears, nose, and throat, audiology, disability, special provisions regarding evaluation of respiratory conditions, sleep apnea, uh, schedule for rating disabilities respiratory system. Tinnitus and sleep apnea are actually covered under the same proposed rule. My other video will have a separate link uh, under the mental disorders. For both tinnitus and sleep apnea, you've got a summary. The respiratory system proposed changes, which again, you'll have the link to these. Please, in your own time, go back and read these. But my goal is to simply show you the diagnostic code 6847 and compare the two ratings. So let's start with diagnostic code 6847, sleep apnea syndromes, obstructive, central, or mixed. To get 100%, you have to have treatment is ineffective as determined by a sleep study or unable to use treatment due to comorbid conditions and with end organ damage. To get a 50%, don't forget these are proposals, treatment ineffective as determined by a sleep study or unable to use treatment due to comor comorbid conditions and without end organ damage. A 10% is incomplete relief as determined by a sleep study with treatment. And a 0% is asymptomatic with or without treatment. So, you got sleep apnea, you go get a study, you were diagnosed, it's service connected, boom, they give you a CPAP, and right now, as of today, you get a 50% rating. If this proposal goes through and the sleep apnea is determined that you are asymptomatic with a CPAP, I guess you got to go back and get another sleep study with the CPAP on your face, and if it works and you don't have any problems, boom, there's a 0% rating. Two ways to look at that, that could be good because you're sleeping better, it could be bad because you've got a 0% rating versus a 50% rating. So let's jump back over to the current 38 CFR Part 4, Diagnostic Code 6260. Tinnitus recurrent, 10% with some notes. Under the current proposal, Diagnostic Code 6260, look at this. As previously noted under revisions to 4.85, VA proposes to remove Diagnostic Code 6260. So paragraph 2 starts talking about tinnitus. The VA proposes a note to 4.85, adding a 10% evaluation of non-compensable hearing loss with tinnitus present where tinnitus is related, related to the diagnosis of hearing loss. So here's the best example I can give, Diagnostic Code 6100 hearing loss. If hearing loss is associated at a 0% under Table 7 and tinnitus is diagnosed as associated with underlying hearing loss, there's a 10%. The first note, the 10% evaluation is only applicable to tinnitus diagnosis associated with non-compensable service-connected hearing loss. Tinnitus diagnosed as associated with another service-connected disability, Meniere's disease, residuals of traumatic brain injury, TBI, cerebral arterial sclerosis, vascular neurocognitive disorder must be evaluated as part of the dis disability with a separate evaluation for tinnitus under diagnosed code 6100. 
And there it is. Note two, tinnitus will only be compensated as part of an underlying service-connected condition. So as of the date of this video, there's pretty much where we stand as far as these proposals. That's the only update that I can give. I'm sorry I can't tell you that it's not going to take effect or it's going to take effect in a couple of months. I just don't have that information. If you like these short and informative videos, please like and subscribe. If you've already done so, thank you very much. In the meantime, if you're looking for an on-demand, online, self-paced video platform, to help walk you through your VA claim from start to finish, don't forget www.maxvadisability.com. There are many platforms that offer a multitude of free resources on how to file a claim. I totally understand that, but these two books are also free. If you read them from front to back, they tell you how to fly a Blackhawk. Well, good luck with that. There's a reason the military has flight school. They can give you all the books in the world, but until somebody shows you what everything in those books means, good luck. Till my next video, Blackhawk Brian, out.